is up you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car track suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2025 honda ridgeline courtesy of sioka honda of hanover in hanover pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we're in this one today because the ridgeline is known for excellent reliability so that is an amazing selling point right there all-wheel drive does come standard as well and in case you were curious this one competes with the hyundai santa cruz and the toyota tacoma but ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2025 ridgeline first one being the sport starting at forty thousand one hundred and fifty dollars which is a modest four hundred dollar bump from the 2024 model year rtl for forty two thousand nine eighty you got the trail sport for forty five thousand three eighty and lastly the black edition which is the one we are in today starting at forty six thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars but regardless of the trim level that you go with the power plant on the ridgeline is going to be the same powering the b is a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated v6 putting out 280 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 262 pound feet of torque coming in at 4700 rpm that power being sent to all four wheels through a nine speed automatic with paddle shifters which of course you guys know we will be testing out here in a little bit zero to 60 time approximately 6.2 seconds that's pretty darn impressive if i'm being honest redline 6900 rpm in case you were curious and mpg numbers coming in at 18 in the city 24 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel but before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the ridge line i did want to mention to you guys i'm just playing around with them now the drive modes there's a drive mode button it's essentially the truck going over some terrain located just behind the shift buttons drive modes will include normal snow mud and sand adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response the traction control system and the all-wheel drive system engagement then as well so now that we got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first and let's just see how quickly they are going to react for us here all right let's do it right here this is good enough of a straightaway in three two one go whoa what the deuce <laughs> this thing is dang quick paddle shifters are actually equally impressive they are pretty darn quick now i don't like that they're just a matte black plastic i think they could have finished them in like a a smooth silver or even if you wanted to magnesium or something crazy like that but dang they react quick and that acceleration was wonderful as well but now let's get back full control to the ridge line here i do want to do an acceleration test and uh let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed in three two one yo I love this thing man this doesn't feel like a truck this feels like an acceleration of like a uh a sporty suv like an alfa romeo or something like that like i, I got it in sport driving man let's take it out of there this thing is incredibly quick it's dang fun so absolutely no issues emerging onto the highway and it, this is just a fun truck to drive like i think it's a lot more fun than the hyundai santa cruz that i recently drove maybe it's the turbo lag that that one comes with because it comes with the turbocharged engine i love the naturally aspirated v6 in this thing because not only is there no lag when you initially hit the gas it's instant acceleration but it's also going to be more reliable over time as well of course so big fan of the engine in the reg line well done honda don't change it don't give it any kind of like turbocharged engine i like the naturally aspirated one but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 12.6 inch ventilated front discs in the back 13 inch solid rear discs as far as that 60 easier stopping distance goes it comes in at 128 feet which is pretty much on par for the course it's a little bit on the higher side of things but as far as braking feel goes it's fine it's fine it's not a firm it's not a firm braking feel but it's not a uh it's not really a soft braking feel either it's honestly just right like three little bears it's just right so i don't have any problem with the braking feel here then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars but if you were to go with that trail sport trim level you're also going to get an off-road tuned suspension as well which is pretty darn cool but 
Anyways, overall, as far as ride quality goes, it rides like an SUV. It does not ride like a truck, which is a good thing. It absorbs the road imperfections perfectly fine. So it's a very smooth ride here in the ridge line. So absolutely no issues there. As far as steering feel goes, it's fine. It, it's not a super heavy steering feel. It's not a loose steering feel either, like you traditionally find on SUVs. It feels like a Honda steering feel. I'll put it that way. It's just right again. So no issues there. As far as cabin noise goes, we're going 40 miles per hour even right now. I'll let you guys be the judge of that. So uh, it's really not that bad. It's a pretty serene cabin without, you know, having acoustic laminated front door glass and things like that. So I don't have any issues there. And touching our rear visibility, if you've ever driven a truck before, you know what that looks like. Pretty much all pickup trucks look alike. Like. So for me, I don't have any issues there either. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2025 Honda Ridgeline. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2025 Honda Ridgeline finished in crystal black pearl. So if you're a fan of Pirates of the Caribbean, this may be the option for you. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where the Ridgeline is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the number five, indicating that the new Ridgeline is built and assembled here in the US, in case you were curious. But starting up front, gloss black front grille, will come standard for all trim levels across the board. LED projector headlights coming standard for all trim levels as well. You do get LED daytime running lights with those. You also get the automatic feature. You also get automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night and it sense the vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams. And when that vehicle is gone, it's going to automatically bounce it back up the high beams for you there. So that's pretty stinking cool. LED fog lights down to the bottom corners. That comes standard for all trim levels across the board. You got to love that. In case you were curious of the ground clearance on the ridge line, that comes in at 7.6 inches. Also to the corners there, you do have front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination. And of course, with our black edition trim that we have today, you do have the black edition badging found at the bottom portion of that front grille as well, which is pretty sick and cool. But overall, that's the front end. I think it looks pretty darn good still. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, but let's now go ahead and swing around to the side. All right, and so now since we are around to the side of this one, you're either going to find gloss black or chrome window surrounds, dependent upon the configuration that you go with, of course. Gloss black or body colored side mirrors, again, dependent upon the configuration. Heated side mirrors for the RTL trim level and up, and then power folding side mirrors for the Trail Sport and Black Edition that we have today. Then taking a look down at the wheel setup, 18 inch shark gray alloys for the Sport, 18 inch machine finished alloys for the RTL, 18 inch pewter gray alloys for the Trail Sport, and then 18 inch black alloys, of course, for the Black Edition. So the wheel design is going to differ between every trim level. So if you ever walk onto a Honda lot, maybe on a Sunday and you're curious about the trim level, just take a look at the wheels. But anyways, skid plates. Also forgot to mention that skid plates come on the Trail Sport trim level only. So caters to its off-road nature, I guess you could say. So anywho, that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the back. All right, and so we now let's see around to the back of the ridge line, all the way to the top center high mount stop lamp. LED tail lights actually do come standard on all trim levels across the board. Also got to love that ridge line lettering etched into the rear tailgate there. In case you're curious about the towing capacity because it's got the connectors down there, it comes in at 5,000 pounds. That's the max towing capacity for all trim levels actually. Then to the corners, this is one of the best exhaust looks when it comes to a pickup truck. I know some other pickup trucks do it, but most don't and I love this look, but dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips. so. Having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So now since we are around to the back of the ridge line, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it of course is a dual action tailgate. One of the best parts about the ridge line, so you can open it up like a normal tailgate, but it also opens up from the right to the left as well. So that is pretty sticking cool. It's something that the ridge line kind of pioneered that a lot of other pickup trucks are now doing because the ridge line started it. So I absolutely love that. Another one of the features that the ridge line pioneered was the in bed storage with the drain plug. So this was the Alt 
ultimate, it still is the ultimate tailgate vehicle. So if you're going to a Ravens game and you're tailgating beforehand, you can put a bunch of ice in the back with that embed storage and then put drinks in there as well and then just have it melt on a hot day or whatever and unlock the drain plug and it's all just gonna leak out underneath, which is convenient. So I'm a big fan of that. As far as the bed length goes, that comes in at 64 inches with the rear tailgate down that comes in at 83 inches. There is a spare tire within that embed storage as well. So I like seeing that, you guys know that. And there's some tie down cleats back there. There's some LED bed lighting for the black edition trim level only and a 115 volt power outlet for the black edition trim level only as well. And that's kind of hidden on the back right hand side of the uh, tailgate back there. So I did like seeing that. Then make your way up to the rear leg room that comes in at 36.7 inches for reference. I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the back seats there. 60, 40 split flip bench seating back there, of course, as well. So they actually can fold up if you have a Mastiff or Great Dane or something like that. And you wanted them to be able to stand up back there. So gotta love that. Rear ventilation does come standard rear center armrest with cup holders as well. Heated rear seats though, that comes on the black edition trim level only. And there is a 12 volt power outlet back there. A couple of USB charging ports actually as well. So gotta love that. But then making our way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seats for the sport, leather seating for the RTL trim level and up. That's what the L stands for in RTL is leather, of course. A 10 way power driver's seat with power lumbar for the RTL trim level and up. Memory settings for the RTL trim level and up. That's for two different drivers. Heated front seats for the RTL trim level and up. So the RTL trim level and up, the RTL trim specifically is kind of the sweet spot when it comes to the seating. And then ventilated front seats for the black edition trim level only. So overall, when it comes to seat comfort, it was perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today. Another cool thing I like about the seating is for the black edition trim level specifically, it does say black edition on the upper portion of the seat. So kind of cool there. But now let's take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It's going to be leather wrapped for the RTL trim level and up and then heated for the trail sport and black edition. It's kind of perforated on the left and right hand side as well. So that was kind of cool. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. It is all keyless entry with a push button start, bright red push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee kind of. So once started up, it is a seven inch digital gauge cluster kind of found on the left there. Speedometer is on your right, but everything on the left is customizable. Um, it tells you how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's trip A, trip B, uh, outside temperature, pretty much everything you could possibly want on a digital gauge cluster. Digital speedometer, of course, as well. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality here. Power moonroof comes on all trim levels but the sport that's the only trim that doesn't get it led interior lighting all trims but the sport as well home link controls for up to three different garage doors found in the bottom portion of that rear view mirror you guessed it all trim levels but the sport overhead sunglass holder coming for all trim levels tri-zone climate control coming for all trims as well so both driver passenger and the rear passengers can all set their individual temperatures there ambient led lighting for the trail sport and the black edition the way that works it's not multicolor. you don't get to pick the color unfortunately Unfortunately, trail sport is going to give you kind of an orange hue black edition that we have today is going to give you red LED lighting so in case you're curious about that wireless phone charger does come standard for all trim levels across the board it's located just in front of the shift buttons there just to the right of that wireless phone charger you got a little bit more rubberized storage you could probably put another phone over there so that's pretty cool just behind that you have dual cup holders I like how the material surrounding the cup holders is all finished in a gloss black that is super easy to clean so I've always been a fan of that and just behind that some of the most storage within a center armrest that I've ever seen there's so much storage in there so definitely shouldn't have any issues but overall everything's kind of finished on the basic side there's a, a lot of gloss black which i do like but also a lot of matte black finishes as well like around the speaker covers and uh on the doors a little bit but i do like there's like a three-tier kind of storage system on the doors i think that's pretty cool so this is a very practical truck i'll put it that way but now let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, infotainment screen here you're going to find a nine inch color touch screen display for all trim levels actually bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay all trim levels yet again factory navigation system for the trail sport and black edition trim levels got of course your cool Honda clocks up there if you wanted them uh, radio information is up there as well you get seven speakers and 250 watts for the sport RTL and trail sport and then an eight speaker sound system for the black edition with 540 watts so what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio let's see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one I 
like it. There is a ton of bass. It's very obvious there is a subwoofer in the ridgeline. So ton of bass, plenty of clarity. That was actually a really good sound system for the ridgeline. If I'm being honest, I like that. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the ridgeline in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard with uh, three different views there in the bottom left hand corner in typical Honda fashion, of course, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, front side side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers to children for the rear car seats rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard in typical Honda fashion, Honda Sensing. So that's their advanced suite of safety, including a collision mitigation braking system, road departure mitigation system, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, and a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert as well. That's pretty stinking cold. But then if you were to go with the Trail Sport or Black Edition, you're also going to get front and rear parking sensors. That's something that doesn't always come available. So that's kind of cool too. Too. But overall, when it comes to my final thoughts of the Ridgeline, I really like this thing. When it comes to all the trucks in a segment, I actually like this one the best, if I'm being honest. And the reason being is because I know this one is going to last longer than all the others. And a lot of people are saying, what about the Tacoma? The Tacoma used to be great, but then they turbocharged it now. And now it's having some issues, but I'm sure they'll get that ironed out in the Kings transmission issues as well. I think they had a recall on. So I like this one. It's insanely quick. Plenty of acceleration for merging onto the highway. Not that you necessarily need that in a pickup truck, but it's there in this thing. Love the dual action tailgate. I love the embed storage. This thing rides like an SUV as well. It's a very smooth ride. As far as room for improvement goes, I think the only thing I can think of is kind of it's lacking some truckness. Uh, and that could be a good thing or a bad thing. Like I said, the ride quality is better for that reason, but the towing capacity is also not as good as some of the competition. Like 5,000 pounds, it's okay. But it's not really truck worthy, I guess you could say. But really, that's the only thing I got on this thing. Like, this is a truck I would actually consider buying. I really like this thing. So anyways, let me know what you guys think of the Ridgeline in the comment section below. That's about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. It's so good to be back. Uh, feel free to follow me on social media stuff at the bottom of the screen if you want. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.